the subject for our next webinar because I'm very interested in um, artificial intelligence and machine learning and how that would actually be incorporated into um, into fish farm systems. Can you just uh, speak to you, 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 you alluded to the fact that um, it would be able to monitor fish behavior. Um, can you can you expand on that just a little bit in, in how yeah. that would that would work? Yeah, so within the industry, there's a number of you know there's a number of uh, startups um, and, and technology providers who are working to apply this technology to to our industry. Um, you know, some of the big names are you know we've we've you've paid attention. You've seen that you know Moe has a partnership with Alphabet company Tidal, right? So it's literally Google is working on uh, developing artificial intelligence to to work to to make fish farming uh, more effective, more more efficient. So the concept, um, but it extends further and it comes like to, for a company like us, it's actually very exciting because we've been involved in aeration and oxygenation since our, since the beginning of our company. And it's really a, a rapidly growing aspect of, of aquaculture. Um, but when you look at, if you go out on a modern fish farm, um, what you're going to see today is some incredibly advanced technology on the feed systems. Um, there's, you know, remotely operated underwater cameras. There's wireless sensors that are underwater, transmitting data wirelessly back to back to the, uh, the central, uh, you know, the central uh, command areas. And what you can see now is that you know some incredible. They, they look like you know offices that look like Mission Control at NASA for farming fish around the world, where they have you know a ton of uh, a ton of uh, technology being applied. As as Tim mentioned, you know there is um, uh, feed detection or pellet detection software now to tie, to team in with the cameras. So the computer can pay attention to the amount to the amount of feed that's not being eaten and give prompts either to a human operator or it can go fully automated to dialing back the feed rates and that sort of thing. So those types of um, technologies are already starting to be applied. CERMAC has uh, has you know has a pretty public um, iFarm initiative where they're going to use photo recognition software to ad literally identify every individual fish within the farms, from what I understand. And use that to try and you know try and individualize is every fish happy. Um, but where it gets exciting and it talks to what Lobardo mentioned earlier is as in the control integration, aeration systems in particular, uh, and and as I mentioned, oxygenation is really just coming really just coming into its into into its own and that pens. But in aeration systems, um, for the most part, they're not integrated into the control systems. And the ability to apply that, to turn around and, and tie in the, the aeration system and the oxygenation system all into that central um, data stream and allow that, give that to be, uh, make that another variable that can be remotely or automatically controlled by, again, whether it's the human farmers using this data as to help guide decisions or whether we step to a more automated approach where we can, uh, you know, allow the, allow the computer algorithms and the AI to make some decisions for us. Be able to give the to be able to whoever's in control be able to give them that ability to uh, control the environment remotely automatically whether it's through through AI or machine learning to be able to turn that into um, really a, a, an advantage so that in as I mentioned you know that you and Tim mentioned again finding good people and and training them that sort of thing it takes time and if we can help the overall farming operations by um, you know, kind of closing that gap so that, you know, you've got that automatic system, that automatic backup who is able to get the, keep the fish happier than ever before automatically. And then you can have, you know, the real human touch where it can um, really, you know, tweak it to, to that optimal efficiency, that optimal, you know, state of happiness for the fish. That, um, that has real economic benefit for the operations. Uh, it really all just translates back into that quality of fish and quality of life for the fish leads to better output for in the end. Um, and so that's where, for us, that's like we're building compressors that have AI and ML built into them so that um, the compressor can automatically respond to changes in the environment or changes in the fish. I mean, truly, if, whether whichever the base technology is, it's identifying whether it's a human or a computer determining the fish are not as happy as they could be, and then have the hardware, whether it's the oxygen generator or the compre air compressor, automatically kick in and deliver what is, you know, based on a huge data set that's been crunched in the background that can automatically deliver um, the right conditions to make those fish 
uh, or that those animals happier, um, that represents a major step forward in our ability to um, to you know raise these animals better. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Tim, did you want to speak to that? Yeah, I would assume that would also have um, uh, local weather streaming into that. Um, anything, you, yeah, anything, anything, right? So you can uh, either forecast or, or yeah. So yeah. any variable that that affects or impacts a system um, could potentially be monitored by um, AI and machine learning, and then and then adapt itself. Um, and adapt those conditions itself without human intervention, which, you know, and Matt, you mentioned it, um, going back to Tim's comment, if, if there's challenges with staffing, um, that becomes something that can be, you know, automated through systems and processes and machines um, that, that also resolves that issue in, in some ways with respect to finding, you know, the people to be able to, to monitor the systems. Yeah, and even even if you take it a step further, and and, and even with the with the staff and the, and the experienced people we have today, if you look at a harmful algae bloom in an aquaculture situation, 24 hours can in 24 hours a harmful algae bloom can wipe out the entire biomass of the farm. Mm -hmm. um, it's it, it's an incredible threat, and so you know if it, first of all you know better surveillance programs and, and remote you know sensors and all that sort of stuff are helping to predict and, and reduce those incidents. But in the event or in a situation where you don't have access to those systems where they fail, um, 24 hours, well, half of that time, good, nearly half of that time, you can expect that your on-site staff are not going to be paying attention. They're going to be sleeping, eating right. dinner or sleeping, right? So a harmful algae bloom to roll in at, say, 9 o'clock at night and have the first, you know, the, the first uh, staff member look out the window or check the, you know, check the readings at 7 a.m., you're looking at 10 hours, right? That's 40% uh, of the of the threat time. So if you can tie um, AI and ML systems, you know, automated systems into, so you have your on, you know, your sensors nearby, uh, or have sensors built in, so that at nine o'clock at night, the system recognizes there's a threat coming, and I'm and fires up and engages to provide that, and then at the same time sends an alarm you know that our systems are designed with an override for the silent mode on your phone so that it's going to yeah. wake you up in the middle of the night if it feels <laughs> necessary right because because that's what need that's what's necessary they're you know they're animals they need to be taken care of 24 hours a day there's only so much we can do as human beings and so to provide that that um that capability is really a, a, just an obvious next step yeah yeah, absolutely. Applied across industries, but fascinating as to what that could mean for, you know, fish farms and aquaculture um, in, in its application.